Thank you, Akila. Good morning to all speakers, guests, participants. Greetings of the day. Dr. Kenta Nagai was born in Osaka, Japan in 1963. He received the PhD degree on the prediction of subcellular localization sites of proteins from Kyoto University in 1992. From 1989, he has worked at several institutions, including Kyoto University, National Institute of Basic Biology, and Osaka University. From 1999 to 2003, he was an associate professor at the Human Genome Center, the Institute of Medical Science, the University of Tokyo, Japan. Since 2003, he has been a full professor at same institute. His main research interest is to develop computational ways for interpreting biological information, especially that of transcriptional regulation from genome sequence data. In 2020, he was awarded the first JSBI prize for his research activity on genome and protein sequence analysis, especially for prediction of subcellular localization signals by Japanese Society of Bioinformatics. Sir, Dr. Kenta Nakai, sir, the session is yours, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, so can I uh, share the, my slides? The... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can share your slides, sir. Uh, the, it, it, I can't. Pro, uh, you must uh, change the setting of the Zoom. I think. Sir, you can share now. You can share the your set, PPT, sir. Uh, yeah. Now, yes. Uh, can, can you see the slide? Yeah. Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Okay. Uh, so, and do you hear me? Yeah, sir, it is audible, okay. sir. Yeah, thank you very much for kind introduction, Dr. Kuma. And uh, so I'd like to also thank the organizers of the symposium for inviting me to uh, this time. I'm very happy to hear. Uh, so let me start my talk. So uh, as you know, the technology of uh, DNA sequencing has uh, made an, a group, great progress in these two, 20 years. Uh, so then the cost for determining the human genome sequence has reduced very dramatically. Uh, you know, the, according to this slide, the cost for determining a human genome is around $1,000 US dollars, but uh, according to the announcement of some uh, developers, the, the cost will even become reduced to $100. So the, soon we will see the, the new age of uh, $100 genome era. So that, that will uh, inevitably uh, change the, our society. Uh, that is, uh, the, the era, new era of personalized medicine will come. The, in this personalized medicine approach, the genome sequence of every person, every individual is predetermined and stored. So, and the information of each individual's DNA sequence, genome sequence, the information will be used for the prevention diagnosis and treatment uh, in daily medicine. So uh, it's very important to see the difference of the uh, genome sequences of individual. Uh, <clears throat> that, that, that kind of differences are called uh, variants. The, so, and the, some variants are known to be associated with diseases. So that is the, the people who have a certain types of variants are known to be more susceptible to uh, become uh, a certain disease. So that it's important to understand the meaning of each variant in the genome. The, uh, as you know, uh, the variants can the, uh, occur in various places in the genome. Some variants are seen on the uh, protein coding regions of the genome, while the other uh, variants are seen on the non coding regions uh, in the genome. And generally speaking, it is more easier 
to uh, assess the meaning, the importance of the variance occurring on that protein coding regions. Because uh, we don't know uh, how the genetic information is encoded in the non-coding regions well. The, in the non-coding regions, the, uh, some information about gene expression regulation or splicing regulation, RNA splicing regulation are seen. And, uh, but uh, the, as you see in the slide, the, some disease associated variants are see, seen frequently in the non-coding regions. So we must figure out how to assess the meaning, importance of the variants occurring on the non-coding regions. Uh, because it's uh, relatively difficult to uh, assess the importance of the variants occurring on non-coding regions, uh, people are using additional information. Uh, uh, such as the uh, epigenetic information. The, in this case, the uh, post-translational modifications of histones, uh, such as the uh, H3K4 trimethyl modification in the histone. Uh, so, and uh, one of the purposes of the main purposes of this address is to uh, point out that the next generation sequence techniques are not only uh, used for just reading the uh, genome sequence or DNA sequences, but also be used for various purposes, uh, that kind of uh, getting various kind of information, such as the uh, histone modification information. Uh, here, that this is an example, the uh, histone modification information, uh, as well as the binding information of transcription factors on the genome can be obtained by the uh, technology called ChIP-seq, the chromatin immunoprecipitation. And so I, I think this kind of information that many people have constructed a system to assess the uh, relative importance of the uh, variants occurring on the non-coding regions. And our group has also uh, published a paper recently uh, on, uh, on such a system. Uh, we used a uh, semi-supervised deep learning approach for predicting the functional effects of genomic non-coding variations. But uh, we will not go into the details of this uh, approach now because of the time limitation. And uh, so as I told you, the uh, technique of NGS can be used in various uh, purposes, for various purposes. Uh, another technique uh, for using the NGS is ATAC sequence. The ATAC sequence is uh, uh, used for uh, detecting the DNA region, genome regions that are loosely packed or uh, open, the so-called open chromatin. The, you know that chromatin DNA genome, genome human genome are packed with nucleosomes and uh, make an uh, chromatin structure within the nucleus. But and the actively uh, used regions in the genome uh, take a more loosely packed uh, conformation and called open chromatin. So, and such kind of open chromatin regions uh, can be detected by techniques such as ATAC-seq. The ATAC-seq uses uh, uh, transposons and transposon uh, preferentially uh, binds to the uh, open chromatin region. So the, using this nature, the, we can map the uh, positions of the, in the genome where the uh, open chromatin structure is seen. And so here is one example of our uh, works that based on the ATAC sequence. The, uh, in this uh, work, we reported that using the ATAC sequence, the uh, sequencing, uh, the, we can more uh, efficiently detect the uh, contaminated bacterial sequences from the uh, host uh, genome sequences. The, uh, the, you can see in the graph, the, the, in the right, the ATAC-seq is more useful for 
uh, detecting the contamination of bacteria. The, the, the reason of the, that is that the bacterial genome, the bacterial chromatin is more relaxed, the loose structure compared to the uh, chromatin structure of host uh, genome. So, so if we use the attack ATAC seq, the uh, ATAC the transposon preferentially uh, sequence attacks the uh, bacterial genome. So the efficiency of detecting bacterial genome will be increasing. So that that's why the ATAC seq can be used to enhance the efficiency of detection contamination detection. Uh, anyway, uh, we need to uh, think about how to uh, construct a system that can uh, efficiently uh, interpret the genome sequences, the, the variation, the meaning of variance on the genome. And the, here, the, the one of the difficulties, the reasons of the difficulties why uh, we, the interpretation of individual uh, genomes on the uh, variants in the non-coding regions is that uh, they have many exceptions. The, so uh, the reason the current, our current genome has not been designed at this current stage, the, but uh, has been uh, evolved the, from a very simple form to the current form. The, the situation is similar to the uh, natural language, the, like uh, English or Japanese. The, the, so the, you know that the Japanese or in, in, both Japanese and English are not, or Hindi, or are not designed in the cur current form. The, they have been uh, evolved in the course of history. The, so the many, many words have disappeared or appeared during the evolution. So, and the language, our grammar uh, contains much, many, many exceptional cases. So the not a very simple uh, grammatical rule can uh, explain everything. So uh, this is very similar to our situation in the genome. So the, <clears throat> so when I was, uh, uh, graduate student, I so I think about uh, fit, how to uh, construct a system that interprets the genome sequence. Uh, and uh, I thought that uh, maybe a technique in artificial intelligence called knowledge knowledge based systems may be uh, suited to uh, as an uh, interpretation of genome sequences uh, that contain many many exceptions the uh, complications. The, so the, this is an example of a famous export system, the not based system uh, called mycin. The mycin is a uh, system that can diagnose the uh, patients the, if he or she is infected by a uh, bacterium or not. So, and the, the system contains many uh, kinds of if then type rules uh, like this. And so combining the rules the, they, the system uh, diagnoses the patient and uh, makes some comments, advices from their uh, treatment. And I, oh, no. I thought that this approach can be used to uh, interpret the genome meaning of the genome sequence. The, at that time, I focused on the interpretation of the uh, protein, subcellular localization information on protein sequences. The, that is that each newly synthesized protein in the cell are uh, uh, recognized with their uh, protein sorting signals, such as signal peptides, the, and uh, then be transferred, transported to the final uh, subcellular localization site, such as the nucleus, mitochondria, inner membrane or outer membrane matrix, et cetera. Yeah, and that, that kind of uh, final localization site is determined by the combination of various sequence features of the uh, sequence. 
the amino acid sequence. The, the such the the rules can be well, written in this in in this way. Well, we, if we use a uh, natural language, so the having the connecting this kind of knowledge in the system, we can uh, interpret the newly uh, input uh, amino acid sequence and predict the uh, final localization site. So the, uh, about 30 years ago, that we, I made uh, such a kind of uh, ex, an export system that the, and named it PSOLT. And the PSOLT system has uh, had about 100 different rules and could uh, predict the final localization, subcellular localization of an uh, input uh, precursor amino acid sequence. And, uh, but uh, the one problem of the uh, piece of, the original piece of uh, was that the maintenance of the uh, knowledge base was not uh, easy. The, because of the genome sequencing uh, era, era the, so many, many newly determined sequences increases, increased, that, but uh, the, Optimizing the system with the increase of the training data was not so easy. So, and the mainstream of the, the artificial intelligence also has shifted to the machine learning. So, uh, that we, that with the collaboration with Dr. Paul Houghton, that we, we used a uh, technique, uh, K nearest neighbor method in uh, machine learning to, uh, to make the, uh, prediction of subcellular localization site. And the name that this is a PSOT2 or a Wolf PSOT. The, this, both of the systems use the machine learning approach. So it's easy to uh, be updated with the new training data, but uh, the uh, merits of uh, explicitly uh, in, including many exceptional knowledge uh, were, have been lost. And uh, so the piece of has been uh, released through the internet and many people have used it. The main uh, three papers of the piece of system have been cited more than 1000 times. So, uh, but this was rather successful. Uh, so I wonder if this a similar approach can be used for the interpretation of the interpretation of the uh, non-coding regions, the transcriptional regulatory regions of the genome. The, uh, as you know, the genome, uh, or the all organisms uh, were start, start, start from a fertilized egg, uh, uh, and uh, the fertilized egg divides and repeats the division, cell division, and that divided the cells uh, differentiate and make a uh, uh, complicated body structure uh, consists of many types of tissues. So, but uh, the important thing is that uh, the each cell in the tissues uh, uh, is, has the common, the same genome sequence. So that's mis still mysterious why uh, the same uh, genome sequence can may indicate the making of so complicated different uh, gene expression patterns. Uh, and here is an, uh, one uh, proposal that in, the, in a certain types of, uh, in the genes that, that are co-expressed, that expressed in a, a similar way, uh, maybe for example, uh, some genes are expressed express, uh, exclusively expressed in a certain tissue and uh, are not expressed in other tissues at all. But that kind of cell type specific or tissue specific expression of uh, genes uh, are often seen. And uh, if you uh, we look at the regulatory regions of these genes, maybe we can find some common structure the, uh, because the, uh, these genes may be regulated by uh, related, but not the same, 
but uh, maybe related uh, mechanisms. So they may share, the, or the majority of the genes, or the, some of the genes at least, may share the common structure in their regulatory regions. Here, here is an example that this is a schematic representation of the upstream regions of the muscle specific genes. The each upstream regions has several uh, cis elements. The cis elements are the, actually the binding sites of transcription factors like MyoD, MEF2, etc. So, uh, so the, as you see, the, not all uh, upstream regions structures are the same at all, but they are more or less related. So the, if we uh, use an, a set of uh, rules, the, maybe we can distinguish this, this group of genes with the other genes. So with this uh, idea, uh, Alexis Vandenbon, uh, who was a PhD student of my lab uh, many years ago, uh, constructed a system uh, for the interpretation of uh, upstream regions and uh, pre for the prediction of tissue specific expression of genes of various species, uh, including mouse and human. And the, he, he, the, his system uh, used, used a set of genes, a set, sorry, set of rules, the uh, small number of rules that describe the uh, group of co-expressed genes. The here, and, and the rules, the rules were automatically uh, optimized, chosen by using the genetic algorithm. The, uh, here is an uh, example of the rules that he found. The, the, this is an example for the uh, rules that describe the uh, features of the upstream regions of the genes that are specifically expressed in human fetal liver. The, so it's a human fetal liver model. And so the first rule shows that the, this uh, motif is found near the TSS transcriptional start sites. And another rule, the second rule, uh, tells that, that this uh, motif is uh, found near another motif, this. So the two motifs, a pair of motif is uh, found in a, within a certain uh, threshold range. And the third one, <coughs> similar, etc. Uh, so com combining these kind of uh, rules that we can uh, distinguish the group of genes that are specifically in, expressed in fetal liver, uh, looking at their upstream regions. And, and so the uh, motif, motifs that were uh, first recognized by the uh, so-called de novo motif finding algorithm such as uh, Gibbs sampler or etc. But uh, the, actually the found motifs, some of the found motifs uh, correspond to uh, non-binding site motifs of the non-transmission factors. And uh, that we systematically applied the algorithm uh, to the many tissue specific genes and the, uh, about half or more uh, number of the tissues we successfully uh, made a rule based system to uh, detect the tissue specific uh, expression of the genes, input genes. The, for example, the, here we see that the, the it's genes that are expressed in the tongue or the fetal liver or the kidney skeletal muscle liver, uh, they, these uh, genes were relatively uh, easily uh, recognized. Uh, the liver specific genes were relatively easily recognized from others. However, not all tissue specific genes were uh, recognized by this approach. That maybe uh, there are some reasons. But uh, 
actually uh, the model the constructed using uh, an a certain organism. So for example, here, the a model, the prediction model based on the human data, or if they, it is applied to the mouse sequences, the, the uh, tongue specific uh, model, uh, human model is if applied to mouse sequences, the upstream sequences that it could uh, successfully, statistically meaningfully uh, recognized uh, tongue-specific tongue genes in mouse also. So, so uh, it, that uh, shows the validity of our approach more or less and also uh, the promoter structure, the cis regulatory structure tend to be conserved between species, the mammalian. And, but uh, one uh, weakness of the, uh, our approach that is that uh, we couldn't uh, consider the uh, effect of distantly located cis regulatory elements, such as their enhancers, known as enhancers. That's so, but currently, the, it is believed that the uh, enhancers are more responsible for uh, determining the cis regulatory uh, tissue or cell type specific uh, expression of genes. So uh, later, we have mainly uh, focused on the analysis of the smaller organisms with smaller genome size. The, uh, for example, Arabitopsis, uh, fruit fly, and uh, C. elegans. The, the in these uh, organisms, the size of the non-coding regions is relatively small. So the, it, it's unlikely that we miss the distantly located enhancers with our approach. So the, another, uh, my former uh, PhD student, uh, Yosvani Lopez, uh, has analyzed, uh, published several papers. Uh, one example is here, here that he, he analyzed the antenna specific genes in Drosophila, uh, fruit fly, and uh, found some uh, common structure on their uh, promoter regions, the upstream cis regulatory regions. And, uh, oh, sorry. He not only uh, analyzed the tissue specific ex expression genes, but also he analyzed the uh, developmental stage specific uh, regulatory genes. The, some genes are specifically expressed in a certain developmental stage. So the, that kind of information can be also used to uh, assess the, how some of the genes, these co-expressed genes, uh, share uh, the common structure in the upstream regions or not. The, 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 he successfully found some common structures and reported uh, it in a paper. And recent, more recently, a new technology called single-cell RNA sequence has appeared. The, uh, the, the, Technology is still developing under development, but uh, with this technology, uh, you can uh, see the transcriptome, the expression pattern of genes in a single cell level. Uh, that is a, a great news for us because uh, uh, we can, that, that if we, even if we say that a gene is specifically expressed in a certain tissue, the, but the certain tissue consists of various kinds of cell types. The, for example, in the muscle, the muscle uh, consists of various kinds of cells. So, so we, the, if we see the expression, gene expression in a single cell, the cell type, the, the, I think the accuracy of the uh, detecting uh, the, or the precision of uh, detecting the common structure will increase uh, because of the uh, accuracy of the data increases. So, so we, but 
On the other hand, the RNA, single cell RNA seq is still uh, notorious with it, their high noise. So uh, there is a uh, uh, trade off between the uh, them. But uh, the, uh, the here we report our current uh, attempt. Uh, unfortunately, this is not uh, finished. The, it's a uh, still ongoing project. So that we, I can only show its preliminary result, but uh, please have a look. The more recent, they are more recent uh, attempts. Actually, the one of my uh, lab member uh, staff, the A.G. Nagai, uh, Dr. A.G. Nagai has uh, analyzed the uh, large scale C. elegans uh, single cell transcriptome data. The, the, the original data was published last year in Science uh, that contained 89,000 cells data. And the, the, here is a uh, uh, result of the cell clustering. The, and we, we not only uh, may the produce the cluster, cell clustering uh, like the original paper, that we also tried an uh, clustering of genes by uh, with, based on the cell type specific expression of the uh, transcript of data. The, in, in other words, that we transpose the matrix, the expression matrix between, between the genes and the cells. The genes and the cells, the rows and the, uh, columns uh, can be transposed in the uh, by way of the genes and cells. The, so then we can get the cluster of genes that are expressed uh, in a similar manner. So, so and uh, the, we mapped the uh, obtained clusters on the uh, cluster of cells. So the, if we use an uh, k-means clustering uh, arbitrarily, uh, the uh, found cluster of genes with a uh, similar expression pattern uh, is uh, mapped in a certain cell type uh, in, like this in the upper slide. So, so it means that uh, the, this uh, uh, cluster of genes uh, shows a uh, cell type specific expression of genes. So uh, we analyzed, oh, no. we analyzed the uh, We analyze the gene ontology terms of the uh, each uh, cluster, the co-expressed genes, and the well, of, of course they are still on a preliminary result. But uh, fortunately, we could uh, see that, that this slide is too uh, small to read. But uh, we observed that the each cluster can is uh, characterized with a certain uh, geoterm. The, the each in this slide, the each the x-axis shows the relative statistical import uh, significance of the geotherm uh, enrichment, and the size of the uh, circle uh, means the uh, number of the genes detected with having that uh, term. So, so the and the co different colors shows the different uh, cell type, uh, different gene cluster. So uh, that means that the different uh, cluster, each cluster of different, uh, each different cluster is characterized with different uh, gene geotherm. So the they uh, have different. Uh, functional uh, activity. And ma, if we uh, shuffle the clusters of the genes, now of course the, uh, we didn't see the enrichment of any enrichment of the geotherms like this. And also, okay, may I continue? Yes, sir, you okay. can continue, sir. Okay. The, so, uh, 
the motif enrichment, the, we, we also checked the uh, motif enrichment, the, not only the geotherm enrichment, we, the, in the cr cluster of genes, uh, the, we, see, we checked if the upstream regions of these clusters share the, the enrichment of a certain motif. And uh, this time, this we didn't use the other uh, new motif finding algorithm, but uh, just to use an uh, existing motif database uh, like Jasper. But uh, we found that some motifs ex ex uh, are enriched in in the uh, upstream regions of certain uh, certain cluster. Like this, here is one example of muscle muscle related cluster and. Uh, here is another cluster, uh, the cerium and sensory function uh, motif, uh, ah, cluster, gene cluster, and they share some uh, characteristic uh, motif on the upstream region. So uh, ma, it, it's still, uh, we are still in the current stage, but uh, the, if we believe that if we continue our attempts to characterize the upstream regions of these clusters, that we will uh, finally uh, make an, a very comprehensive uh, map of the uh, upstream regions that, that characterize the uh, cis regulatory element type arch architecture of the uh, gene regulatory regions. And that will be useful for uh, assessing the variance of the uh, genome sequences. And, but uh, it's, it may would be too opt optimistic if we believe that uh, that, that kind of cis, uh, cis elements based uh, simple approach will be suffice to understand all the cell type specific uh, expression of genes. Actually, uh, it is uh, also believed that the cell type expression of genes is regulated by the changes of the higher order chromatin structure uh, like this here, the, as shown here. And in this example, a uh, loop structure in the chromatin is changed between different cell types like this, uh, with the cohesine ring, the movement of the cohesine rings, and then the target genes of enhancers can be changed between different tissues, uh, different cell types. So, so we if we uh, this is true, uh, but maybe it is true more or less. So we should uh, include this kind of uh, mechanism to understand uh, the importance of the genome sequence. Uh, and also, the, it is observed that the genome sequence, the chromatin structure, chromatin is uh, divided into two components, the A compartments and B compartments. The uh, A compartments of the genome is uh, located near the center of the nucleus and uh, uh, takes a relatively loose, loose, loosely packed uh, configuration and uh, ac open and actively uh, used. While the B compartment of the genome is located near the uh, periphery of the nucleus and uh, tightly packed relatively and uh, not uh, active. So this kind of uh, di differences between the uh, uh, genome sequences can be uh, obtained. Uh, oh, sorry, the using the technique Another NGS based technique called high C or chia pet. The, this uh, te technique also uses the C, my NGS, the DNA sequencing, but the, it can detect the uh, structure of the uh, DNA looping or the higher order chromatin structure. So the, using this uh, high C technique, the uh, AG Nagai. Uh, again, uh, collected uh, some publicly obtainable data, uh, data of high C uh, with various types, cell types, and compared the, uh, how the A distribution of AB compartments are shared or different each other. 
So the, here, the, this is the uh, example of the uh, AB compartments. The upper peaks shows the position of A, A compartment, while the lower peak shows the positions of the B compartments. And the, the, they are the profiles of the ES cells, BS, B cells, cortex, and sperm. And, and so the, you see that the overall that the uh, AB compartment, the distribution of AB compartments are uh, almost similar to each other, but uh, they, are, they show some subtle differences. So the, it is particularly interesting to see if the genes that are located in such a uh, variable regions of the AB compartments are related to the uh, serotype specific uh, function of the cells. So the, we, here is an example of such analysis that we compare the expression of the uh, genes, for example, the, that, for in, that are located in the regions, A changes the compartments from A to B uh, between the B lymphocytes and the B lymphoma. The, that is, the, if the B lymphocyte is, uh, becomes cancer, the B lymphoma, the, uh, the, the, these genes expressed uh, expression will be uh, decreasing. The, that we can uh, expect. And uh, as you, can, you expect here, the, in the left graph, the expression level decreased. Uh, Compare if we compare the uh, A to B. So, and the, if we see the functional characterization of these genes, the, for example, the apoptotic uh, process is uh, statistically, seems to be statistically significant. So, maybe <coughs> this, this uh, uh, reflects the some uh, nature of cells. The, 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 Changes of the uh, cancer, cancer formation of the B lymphoma. Well, of course, the, it is uh, the um, statistical significance is, may not be so high, but uh, uh, I, we believe that this kind of approach will also be important to understanding how the uh, non coding regions of the genome uh, regulates the cell type specific expression of genes. So that, that is the end of my talk. The, in summarizing the, uh, my talk, the first, the NGS is not only used for just reading the DNA sequences, but also for getting various types of information, uh, such as the uh, hyper, higher order uh, chromatin structure, etc. The second, Classical rule-based approaches may be suited for the interpretation of genomic information. The, as I explained, the, maybe the knowledge-based rule-based systems uh, uh, would be the system that the, the, now, nowadays the, all people are studying deep learning, et cetera. But uh, I think that the, the more classical rule-based approaches uh, would be also important, become important again to characterize the genome sequence because the size of the genome is limited. Uh, the, finally, a remaining big question is how the, the epigenetic information is indicated by the uh, genetic information. The uh, unification, the integration of the first approach I explained and the second approach I explained, that how to integrate these kind of uh, approaches would be uh, the my remaining question. Uh, that's all. Thank you uh, for your okay. sorry. Thank you for your attention. I will accept questions if time. Sir, thank allows. you so much for your uh, valuable presentation and valuable presentation, sir. And thank you for your speech on machine learning approach and also one genome many cell type approach and also you have given your enlightened talk on new technology called single cell RNA sequencer. And very much thank you for your valuable time, sir. And session is hand over to Akila. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful words.